5G is the next generation of wireless service, and it may be closer than many people think. Yesterday, Verizon CEO Lowell McGab and I he invited all of us to take a closer look to understand how a world functioning in the 5G network will impact healthcare, gaming, and even how we cross the street. You can see some of it right there. Joining me now is uh, Verizon's Chairman and CEO, Lowell McAdam, right here on the floor of the NYC. Thanks. Morning, and thanks for the tour yesterday. It was interesting, of yeah, course. Fun. Not too far from here, you have a uh, basically 5G coming into a large setup where you have a lot of different software engineer applications, yeah. people coming in from other companies trying to figure out how it all is going to work. How far are we from actually seeing some of this stuff hit the consumer or business? Yeah, I think we're a lot closer than people think, David. We've uh, already announced that we're going to do three to five cities. We're locking in on four this year, so we'll be commercial. Uh, two of those are Sacramento and Los Angeles. We should point out Los Angeles, that's news right now. Yeah. That has not been shared previously. Yeah. So LA will be the second that we know about of the four cities that you're going to be rolling out in. Yeah. When are you rolling out? Well, we'll, we'll launch by fourth quarter. So that's our, uh, that's our plan. We've, been, we've had some great partnerships with some forward-looking mayors. Marty Walsh in Boston is a good example. Mayor Garcetti uh, in LA. So we want to really be able to show the scale of 5G and the impact that it'll have on people across all the applications, some of which you just mentioned. Right. Now, well, yesterday I saw a lot of the potential applications. So much of it has to do with the lack of what we call latency. Yeah. There's no longer any lag time. Everything right. is immediate. Right. And that allows for so many new applications, doesn't it, in terms of not just for people at home, really, but more for the Internet of Things yeah. and connecting people around business decisions, even. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of confusion about 5G at this point. There's going to be different flavors of it. What you experienced yesterday is what we call ultra-wideband 5G, and it's based on the assets that Verizon has amassed. So as you know, we bought 36 million miles of fiber. We're putting fiber out there so that we can have big pipes feeding the cells. And then we bought a lot of spectrum from XO and Straight Path. So we will literally have hundreds of megahertz of bandwidth to deliver the full suite of services of 5G. You don't get latency and throughput and the literally thousands of times uh, improvement in capacity. 5G will deliver a megabit of service for about one-tenth of what 4G does today. So that allows us to push out into markets and applications at a, at a good cost that we've never been able to do before. Well, let's talk again about the push out then, because I am curious. So Sacramento and LA, the fourth quarter of this year, what does that actually mean? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll literally have over a thousand cell sites up and operating on the global standard. We've got CPE for a fixed wireless application. So the intelligent home and you, you experience what's going on with home appliances and, and broadband, Alexa, you know, uh, Siri, things like that. So, and then we'll very quickly in first quarter, as the mobile devices come available, move into a mobile environment. The beauty of how we're architecting our network is it's a, it's a multi-purpose network. So whether we offer uh, fixed wireless or mobile or an enterprise service, it doesn't matter. That allows us to drive our costs down and serve more customers. All right. And you mentioned, of course, the devices themselves. That's the thing. I mean, they're yeah. not in anybody's hand right now. When is that actually? And in 4G, it took some time as well. Yeah. And people are holding on to their phones longer, by the way. I mean, yeah. I don't know if this promulgates an upgrade cycle. Well, I, I think if, if you look at how smartphones started out, uh, I remember having the discussion with Steve Jobs when he when we said we were going to go to 10 megabits to a handset, his eyes lit up and he had all these ideas. Now delivering a gigabit to the handset, you're not going to have all of that with the first device, but that will be another long uh, opportunity for us to penetrate the market and get bring customers new and exciting services. Jen, uh, John Ledger, of course, he of Dumb and Dumber, uh, uh, was on our air when they announced the Sprint T-Mobile deal, talking about how we lag in 5G, yeah. taking into account to AT&T and Verizon in terms of their spending and saying as a combination, Sprint and T-Mobile are going to spend far more and we're far behind China. How do you respond to that criticism? Well, look, I can't say where they are in their process, but this is a three-year journey for us. We started with global standards. We worked with the other carriers around the world and the, uh, and the equipment suppliers like Ericsson and Nokia and Samsung. And we've, uh, we've worked with the cities like LA and Sacramento. And we had 11 markets up last year in testing with hundreds of cell sites. 
proving that millimeter wave is an outstanding set of spectrum for this. So we have been plowing money into this within our capital budget for the last three years, and we're going to be commercial. So I'm not sure what's not happening in the market, and I think China is working hard to stay up with us. Yeah, now yesterday I, I got to experience sort of what would be more the applications on the Internet of Things or machine learning, connecting, connected devices. Yeah. But so many people are focused on what this will mean for fixed wireless in the home. Yeah. When the day comes that I, I don't actually have my phone on me right now, yeah. but when the day comes that I can be deliver, you can deliver a gigabyte there. Yeah. Um, can you get through trees? Can you oh. get through leaves? Can you actually yeah. get somewhere where you don't need cell sites every, you know, 25 yeah. feet from my house? Yeah, well, th those were some of what I called the myths of millimeter wave, because no one thought that was good. And by the way, we're the only ones that have it now, so it's to their advantage to say it's no good. But when yeah, we Ledger out, said it was no good. Yeah. He made a point of that. Well, you know, I'm an engineer. I'll just speak for what I know. Uh, when we went out in these 11 markets, we tested for well over a year, so we could see every part of foliage, every storm that went through. We have now busted the myth that it has to be line of sight. It does not. We've busted the myth that foliage will shut it down. I mean, there was back in the days when a, a pine needle would stop it. That does not happen. And, and these things, in, in the 200 feet from a home, we're now designing the network for over 2,000 feet from transmitter to receiver, which has a huge impact on our capital need going forward. So those myths have disappeared. We're charging ahead. The market will judge. All right. Well, I know you, of course, for many years as an engineer, as somebody who was behind the building the network that helped define Verizon and differentiated for some time from your competitors yeah. and have, of course, the largest subscribers and perhaps get the highest price. Do you see 5G the same way that you saw, whether it was three or 4G in terms of being able to yeah. offer that? And if so, how do you take advantage of it? You know, I don't see it that way, David. I'll, I'll tell you, I've been in this business since the first phone call back in 84. I have never seen a technology that will be more disruptive and have more benefit for consumers than 5G. It's just so completely obvious to me. And it won't be the traditional way where your handset, the speed to your handset will get you all excited. It's the ability to do autonomous vehicles. You can't do autonomous vehicles without 5G. You saw a couple of healthcare applications. The opportunity to lower healthcare costs and have better outcomes because of 5G and the latency of it. You saw a gaming console, yes, or a gaming service yesterday. Because of the latency of the network, and for your viewers, that means how responsive the network is, you don't have to have big gaming consoles. You don't have to have tethered uh, devices for... for uh, for, uh, uh, yeah, we're it, looking at some pictures of it there. Yeah, for virtual reality. You, you, All that stuff changes. Right. I so, mean, what I took away from it immediately was, okay, I don't need the Xbox in my home. I mean, yeah. there are going to be investment implications that our viewers are only going to be able to start to understand. Yeah. But to your point, you think that many of the applications haven't even been thought of as yet. No, I mean, we've, we've had some of these, like autonomous vehicles, in our mind for a long time. But the ability to do it and do it well, you know, with, with, uh, with the camera technology and communicating with cars, you'll be able to see around the corner so you can tell someone's about to step off a curb as you're planning to do a right turn or it'll map what's going on 100 miles ahead of you so you can plan. And this has a big impact on sustainability, on carbon footprints, on, on the cost of the, of the car even. So no matter where you look, it'll have a huge impact on people. Not to mention the data that's going to be generated and need to be stored and right. manipulated by AI. AI, I would right. think that uh, cloud computing will become even more important. Well, and, and because the, the network is so responsive, the cloud can be out closer to the edge of the network, which makes it even more responsive. So today's network, not to get too technical, takes about 200 milliseconds to go out, gather some information and come back. That should be under a millisecond. So for the viewers, that's less than you can blink your eye. And so think at 60 miles an hour and the amount of distance your car travels in the blink of an eye, the, the computers can be managing that car for you. It makes it much more safe. You know, uh, some people say, well, it's just a lot of hype. Yeah. I can remember Fios and some of the promises there. Not that it isn't a strong service, but it really is not that different from what potentially yeah. I'm getting from my cable company. Um, how do you respond to those who say, I'll believe it when I see it, and, yeah. you know, and I really think that this is being overplayed at this point, not to mention sure. it's going to be many, many years. 
Well, I think, look, you're never going to convince some people about it. The early movers, when I sit down with CEOs that are in the electronics business and they realize what they can do with, with a gigabit of throughput instead of 10 megabits when they can see a millisecond latency, their eyes light up with the ideas. So the consumer just needs to sit back and enjoy the ride. And Verizon doesn't need to, to lay out this whole path because the people that are out there, the entrepreneurs that you saw yesterday, they have those ideas. And I think this is going to be a, a game changer. I, I, you know, I've used the term, David, this will usher in the fourth industrial revolution for this country. And I sincerely believe that. And what is it going to mean then for Verizon? Uh, you and I have talked for uh, a couple of years now about the promise of 5G, but yeah. we've also had discussions about whether Verizon also needs to have a larger footprint in media yeah. or in content. And you've gone down this road a few times yeah. looking at various companies. Yeah. Is that no longer the case? Do you no longer have to worry as much about that because you think you're going to be dominant in 5G? Well, we've looked at that over the years and we made our decision to go digital. That's why we bought AOL and Yahoo. And we talk now about super channels of sports and finance and, and, uh, and news and, and some entertainment. Um, we've had the chance to go down the linear model, either by purchasing satellite companies or purchasing content companies, and that's not in our that's not our strategy. Our strategy is to get digital content out there over the fastest pipe we can at the lowest cost, and that's why 5G makes so much sense. All right, so a competitor like AT&T, which of course right now is on the cusp potentially of being able to buy Time Warner, or your dalliance with Charter in the past, different mm -hmm. distribution, yeah. or CBS. Are you mm -hmm. telling me? When I hear those rumors in the future, I should disregard them? Yeah, look, uh, you've seen us act, right? We bought 36 million miles of fiber. You've seen us be incredibly active on the 5G front. I'd argue that we've led the globe in that area. So our actions outspeak anybody's speculation on what Verizon's going to do. And what about pricing and how should we view the coming model for 5G? Are people, the network yeah. is simply going to have a lot more capacity and therefore you're going to have a lot more revenue or are you also going to be able to increase price or? Well, the difference that people have yet to understand about 5G is it's a bunch of different networks. So as we talked yesterday, if you want to embed sensors in asphalt for road, uh, for traffic management, you can design the network to give 10 year battery life for those sensors. If you need the, the sub millisecond latency for an automobile, that's you design the network differently. So we call that slicing the network. So all of those use cases will have their own pricing. So thinking about it's $90 or $100 per subscriber, all of that model goes out the window as you go into 5G. It's going to be a very different approach. So nobody's really yet. I mean, the analyst community, I would think, is just starting to even grapple with what they're, what they're looking at when they think about their 2022 earnings estimates. Yeah, it's, it, that's exactly right. You have to throw out the financial models. And, you know, we've spent a lot of time, and you've seen some upgrades on us recently, because as the analysts really understand what 5G G can do and the models for it, it's not going to be the case where we flip the, the switch and everybody gets every aspect of it because, it, let's frankly, in 4G, a lot of people monetized on our capital dollar. As we go forward, you know, we're going to be customizing the network for the application. We'll be much more involved in that model. You have to spend a lot more money to do all this? No, I don't think so. I mean, the, the, the multi-purpose network replaces what we had, a wireless network and an enterprise network and a, and a Fios network. And now the fiber is going to carry all those services so we can be a lot more efficient in our capital dollars. So we're feeling pretty good about staying within our guidance. And finally, just to come back to this content thing to make sure I understand. I mean, I saw you guys in the proxy also. I mean, it didn't say your name. For Fox, at least you seem to still have some interest. Well, you, you seem to be telling me you're not going to have interest. As you say, it, it was, uh, you, you assume that that was us in there. Um, look, I, I can just say that uh, we have looked at these assets over the period of time. We've uh, made the decision that digital is the way for us to go. We have no interest in a linear content company. All right. Lowell, always appreciate the updates. Yep. This was a significant Thank one you. today. That was good. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You're very well. competitive at these games, too, by the way, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> and we had some fun. Nice <laughs> to see you. Thank you. All right, Lowell Bye. McAdam, Chairman and CEO of Verizon. Back to you guys. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.